Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Daniel Del Paso in the three minute pool. So this guy's a little bit over 2200. Don't think I played this guy anytime recently, but um, I do recall his name. Let's play a Queen's Gambit declined. Play Bishop E7. We're gonna proceed down a main road. He takes on D5. This is not supposed to be that good, the early capture, because I think I can uh, effectively get my bishop out to F5 early. He disagrees. So now I'll go c6. I mean, I can play uh, knight g4 to get him to retreat. Let's go bishop f5 first, though. Hit his queen. If he goes queen b3, I'll play queen b6. So now we're headed for a exchange. I think I should go knight g4. Uh, he can go bishop g7, though. Bishop g7, rook g8, bishop e5. That's probably okay. Let's just do that. This is a loose piece out on g4, but I don't think there's any way for him to exploit it. And he will bring the bishop to e5. I'll take. So I can't castle kingside anymore, but um, given the reduced material, I I think it's acceptable. Yeah, we're just trading some stuff. He'll probably castle short. I could try to castle by hand. Castling queenside might be a little much. I think I will try to castle by hand. I have the time. If he wants to open the position, which it may seem like he should because my king situation's a little uncertain at the moment, but if he wants to open the position, he's got to take some pos positional risk like that, yeah accepting an isolated pawn. Takes with the queen. So is he going to try to liquidate it soon with d5? Let's go rook e8. Maybe just king g7. Yeah. Let's just get the king out out of harm's way. And he's trying to liquidate that pawn. He wants it gone. Hmm. If I push c5, I'm a little worried he might go d6. Should I be concerned about that? Maybe not. Let's just do it. Because if d6, I, I can play bishop f6. I don't even have to take the pawn yet. Meanwhile, if he doesn't uh, play d6. I might put my bishop on d6. Yeah. Blockade. Now it's important that I stay out of range of his knight. Because he'll be trying to bring the knight to e4. Just like that. Hmm. Let's just harass his queen a little bit again. Okay. Let's defend this pawn. Get this guy out. Yeah, and I'll put this bishop here as promised. Could get sharp if he plays knight d5. Because if he does that, I don't want to put my bishop on d4. That would be a poor square to anchor it on. Um, let's just go b6 for now. Defend this pawn. Okay, that doesn't worry me. It's fine. I'm going to take this pawn. Because I think I can. Let's go here. And if he goes knight c7, I can... Okay. Now I should have some stuff going. Mm, let's go rook e5. Just try to trade a little bit. Ah, I can win a piece. Yeah, 
And I'm safe. I got everything defended, too. He resigned. Okay. So my time disadvantage was not significant there. That was an interesting bishop versus knight battle in a pretty open board. Let's take a look. So QGD with bishop e7. I've explained before that the idea of this move is to rule out lines with bishop g5, an early bishop g5, aka the exchange variation. Because if black plays knight f6, which was the main move for a very long time, and is still played a lot, you have to be ready for this line, which is the highest scoring line for white against the queen's gambit declined. White has a pretty massive score in this line. So bishop e7 is um, seems to be the preferred choice these days. And he took on d5. I, I don't think this is that great of an idea, personally. You know, bishop f4, bishop g5 are the main lines. Because um, when you take, you always there's always this chance that black can liberate their bishop faster than normal. So he goes queen c2, trying to stop me from playing bishop f5. Now, if I were to play just like castles, then I think he stands a good chance of being able to transpose to like a, a position from the exchange variation. You know, something along these lines. This would be very standard. Knight bd7, bishop d3. It's playable for black, totally playable, but that's not what I want. Especially when he, he does this early capture and plays queen c2. So that's why I played g6. I'm trying to force my bishop into f5. Just not sure how I should respond to bishop h6. I didn't go bishop f5 here because queen b3 could be an issue, attacking this pawn. You really don't want to play b6 in these structures because d5 becomes weak. You want to be able to have uh, the structure that I got in the game, pawns on d5, c6, b7, where you only have one weakness, which is the b7 pawn. So he now plays e3. I got bishop f5 in here. Trade, trade. And I want to be able to castle, so that's why I played knight g4. And if he had played bishop f4, I would have castled short. So he did this. And I have a bishop and a knight versus his two knights, but you know I, I can't castle. So I think the position's roughly equal here. We'll just see what the engine says, but I didn't feel like I was at any major disadvantage because of the way I played it. Engine slightly prefers white. Hmm. I don't know if that's just the engine, how it normally prefers white in this line or not, but let's just see what the engine thinks about. Yeah, I don't know if the engine is that helpful even early on. <laughs> Like, the engine doesn't understand strategically that black wants to trade the light square bishops. That's a foreign concept to it. Maybe he would have had better chances if he kept the knights on, as it's suggesting, like knight f3. That could potentially create more threats around my king. This allows me to simplify a bit. It's suggesting queen f5. No way I would have played that move. <laughs> that looks so ugly. It's saying, ah, you're fine in this position. Really? I don't know about that. <laughs> My structure is pretty awful. Um, so I tried to kind of castle by hand here. He went e4. Because if he doesn't take the chance to open the position up, it might pass him by and I might be able to play king g7 and get my rook over to e8, let's say. He could do the minority attack, which if you spotted that a minority attack was possible here, Good job, you probably have some experience in these positions. So he could play rook b1 with the idea of going b5, b4. But the material is somewhat reduced. I don't think it's that dangerous of a plan anymore. Um, you know, might deserve some attention, but I could play a5 potentially to try to stop him. Um, I could just play king g7 and let this happen. Maybe play b5 even. Although now if this happens... This might be a little more concerning for me because c5 is weaker than it was in the game. So I'm not exactly sure what his best plan would be. He, he opts for e4, taking on an isolated pawn. And likewise, I'm not sure I made the best decision here. Bishop f6, or uh, king g7. I was thinking about bishop f6 a lot too, intending this. Because I could take on c3, but I think he can take here, and this endgame looks pretty equalish. 
It's just like dead draw almost. So that's why I played King G7. I mean, in a static sense, the positional factors favor black. I have the bishop versus his knight with pawns on both wings. So most endgames should be favorable for black if that holds true. Also, he has the isolated pawn. So he wants to either get rid of that isolated pawn or play actively, generate threats against my position. So it's not totally surprising he wants to go d5. The computer doesn't like that move that I played. I thought about doing this and just after capturing, uh, playing this endgame, that would have been interesting to go for. You can see it prefers black by a little bit. Because I think the point is I'm going to put my bishop on f6. And this is a weakness, this diagonal, especially that b2 pawn. And even though I've, I have some isolated pawns, they take away squares from his knight. His knight is not a good piece here. It doesn't have any stable outpost square to, to go to. I would have liked to play this endgame. It's sort of been nice. I thought about it for a split second, but um, you know, I thought I thought c5 was a better way to play it. Perhaps not. Blockaded his pawn. Maybe I didn't need to do that. Maybe rook g8 is also good. Yeah, and likewise bishop e7. I don't know. I just saw that he might be trying to bring his knight to e4. And I didn't, I didn't want his queen and knight to be able to coordinate, especially in the vicinity of my king. That's that's bad news. Computer likes f5. That ugh, that seems risky to me. Uh, chronically weak e6 square. I mean, he'd love to put his knight there. That would be tough. But I mean, something like getting this rook in seems like a natural plan. Maybe this is okay, though, if I'm careful. A4, I don't think that was a good move. Maybe if I had already played A6, but he's doing this pretty proactively. Yeah, D6 seems critical. Because um, I, I don't want to take the pawn. Taking the pawn would be a disaster. Threats on the bishop. So I was, I was going to have to play this. And then I was wondering if he could jump in here with his knight. Attacking the bishop. I take on B2. And then I was looking mainly at rook B1. But I guess that's fine for black. I can go here. But rook d2, aha, uh -huh, that might be a different story. Because the problem, and I talked about this briefly in the game, is that I can never play this move because rook takes d4 just annihilates me on the spot. Take, Check. take, and this is what I was talking about with this queen-knight coordination close to my king. I mean, no way I'm surviving this. Like, <laughs> his knight gets into f6 next move, it's, it's chaos. Pass d-pawn, my rooks are useless. No way. Uh, so I have to be constantly aware of that, because otherwise this bishop uh, would be great on d4. It would be an excellent piece. You see how both of our minor pieces are like fighting for stable squares in the center, because the center is like pretty wide open. Um, and if I play bishop e5, I assume f4 is a problem. Yeah, so he needed to be energetic here and play... After, after um, I played rook c8, he needed to play d6 knowing that I can't take, and then knight e4, offering the b-pawn, but seriously depriving my bishop of squares. And I would have had to find some creative idea like this, queen d5, bishop f6, which looks uh, really scary, to say the least, <laughs> when, he, when he has either this or this. So once he passed up that opportunity, I think my position starts improving. Bishop f6, knight e4 is still pretty good. This happens. Yeah, and he loses the thread. Now I'm organized. There's pressure against his d6 pawn. A knight e4 move is no longer as devastating. And I felt confident enough to grab that pawn. And now he's just trying to make sure I kept his d-pawn and his knight at bay. Those are the things that could hurt me here. He could play knight c7 to fork my rooks, but I have either rook e4 or rook e1 check to bail out. It's moderate time scramble at this point. Probably didn't play the, exactly the best moves, but spotted that I had c4 in this position. Winning his knight. Yeah, and if queen c7, I can just swap and play rook c5, and I stop his pawn. So... 
Hope you guys enjoyed that game. And I think I'll play a couple more three-minute games. I might just do that today. I haven't played that for a while. So thank you guys for watching. Please leave me any feedback in the comments. Thanks, guys.